everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day, and today I'll be reviewing An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I debated whether I wanted to make a review for this book or not because I honestly don't have too much to say about it, but I feel like as a book reviewer, like one of my favorite things about reviewing is that it's like a way of documenting my feelings or thoughts on a book, and I can always look back on it and be like, oh, so that's how I felt about that one. Also, I feel like it's one of my responsibilities to put my thoughts out there regardless, even if they're a little bit unpopular, just in case there's someone out there who agrees with me and I don't want them to feel like alone in their opinion. So that being said, I thought I would make a review of this anyway, and just a warning, I didn't really, really love this book, but I don't want you guys to be like scared if you love this book because I didn't hate it either. I didn't dislike it at all, actually. I just thought it was okay. I was just a little bit disappointed. So to get started, I'll tell you guys that I was so, so pumped for this book. I was so pumped for it. The second I heard about it, I was like, oh my god, I have to read it ASAP. I included it in my most anticipated releases of 2015 video because I was just so excited for it. It sounded so good and everyone was loving it. And sometimes when that happens, hype can kill a book for me. Because of all the praise that it was receiving, half of me wanted to love it as much as everyone else did, but also the other half of me wanted to tear it to pieces. So I'm saying that, I'm putting that out there just so everyone knows that I didn't come into this book with like zero expectations or a clean slate or anything. I came in with really, really high expectations. And unfortunately, I was a little disappointed. I don't think this book is bad by any means. It's very well constructed, actually. You can really tell that Saba Tahir did a lot of calculating in her plot to make sure everything flowed well in her final product. But I guess my hopes were just too high because I finished the book feeling underwhelmed and unimpressed. I can see why people love this book. There are a lot of elements in this book that if they had worked for me, I would have completely loved. But to me, I had two main issues with this book. Number one, it just wasn't original enough. All the plot elements felt really, really familiar to me. Like I had seen them before in a different book. And number two, I didn't really connect with either of the main characters. And I'm a huge character person when I'm reading for fun. When I'm reading a book for fun, I really, really need that emotional investment in the story. I really need to feel in tune with the character. And if that never happens while I'm reading, it makes it more difficult for me to enjoy that book. But yeah, let's talk about what An Ember in the Ashes is about. We have two main characters, as the book is told, in alternating point of views. There's Laia, whose older brother gets taken by the government and so she has to go save him. She poses as a servant slash slave girl to the commandant. She has this deal with a rebel group that if she does this, then in exchange the rebel group will help break her brother out of prison. Then there's Elias, who's graduating from the military academy. He's like top ranked and very impressive, but of course he secretly hates what he's doing and he wants to run away. That's essentially the premise that's given by like the blurb on the back of the book, but there is also another main plot element that plays into Elias's part of the story, and that plot line brings a lot of excitement to Elias's storyline. The reason I don't have that much to say about this book is because I didn't love it, nor did I hate it. So I'm on that like middle ground. Like when you love a book, you can just gush about it forever, and if you hate a book, you can spend hours ranting about it and picking it to pieces. But when you're in the middle, what is there to say? Like, oh, it's just okay. It was fun while reading, but quickly forgotten after finishing. It was just an all right book for me. I know lots of people love it, and I'm glad they do, but personally, I just wasn't feeling it. To me, it felt too generic and formulaic. I think a lot of that boiled down to the characters, but I'll talk about that in the spoiler section. So those are my non-spoilery feels on this book. I'm gonna go into the spoilers now, so if you haven't read An Ember in the Ashes, if it sounds interesting to you, pick it up, Read it, come back, we can talk about it. So if you ever read the book, goodbye, 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 bye, 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 bye. Maybe it's this, or maybe it's this. Okay, so I didn't really care for Laia or Elias. I really, really could not connect with either of them for some reason. Elias was frustrating to me, and he felt kind of douchey. And Laia was just kind of dense. I don't know if it's Laia, maybe it's Leia. I said it like Leia in my head, but then I've heard other people say Laia, which is why I'm saying Laia. She understandably accepted the Resistance's help, but later it becomes pretty clear that the Resistance is being really, really fishy. And if I were her, I would have tried to figure out why they were acting that way. And if I were her, I would have trusted Telemann the most. He's the only one who was directly in contact with her brother, so to me, logically, he would be the 
best person to trust. I wish Laya would have talked to him more. I felt like he could have been a lot more helpful, but every time he tried to talk to her, she would just run away. Elias's trials storyline was pretty cool. My favorite trial was when Elias had to like command his army to battle against Helene's army and they had to kill their own friends. That was my favorite because it elicited the most emotion from me. I think I might have cried actually. I just remember thinking about how horrifying it must be to have to kill like, people that are close to you. But I couldn't believe they were actually dead. I thought maybe it was going to be some kind of simulation where the person would have to think they were actually killing them, but at the end they'd be like, just kidding, they're alive, everyone's safe. But nope, they were dead for real. It's a very cruel world. I liked Helene a lot. She frustrated me immensely at times, but I still liked her character. At the very least, I liked her a lot more than I liked Elias. In the beginning, Elias and Helene kind of reminded me of Percy and Annabeth a little bit. Well, if Percy was not as funny, and Annabeth was like some anal martinet. But eventually, Elias and Helene definitely diverged from Percy and Annabeth, and then they no longer reminded me of them. There's something about Elias that I just really don't like. He just rubs me the wrong way for some reason. I really can't explain it. I can't give you a reason why. It's just something about him that I don't like. And I absolutely do not ship Elias and Laya. It doesn't feel right to me. I don't feel their chemistry at all. I don't feel the spark. I just, I don't ship it. Nope. Nope. Keenan, on the other hand, that's a guy I can get behind. I liked him a lot. I think his disposition changed too quickly in the beginning. He was so cold and reserved, and then at the snap of a finger, he suddenly changed and seemed to care for Laya a lot, and I understand it's because he has the history with Laya's dad, but it still felt too abrupt to me. It seems pretty clear to me that Keenan isn't Laya's endgame, but I still prefer him in my heart. Sabata here did a really great job of saturating her world with cruelty. Cruelty is seriously everywhere and it's very convincingly done, especially in the trial. Cruelty takes a human form not only in the Commandant, but also in Marcus. I think he's the scariest character. The fact that someone can just kill their own twin brother and then act normal days later, or talk so carelessly about raping women, it's so disgusting, I cannot stand it. Moving on from the characters. The book, for the most part, felt like a dystopian to me. With the augurs and all the mythical creatures coming into play later in the book, it felt more like a fantasy, but for the most part, it gave me dystopian vibes. I think the augurs are so interesting. I definitely want to learn more about them. I think out of all the characters in this novel, including the main characters, the augurs are the ones that I would be most interested in reading a book about. And I think that's all I have to say about this book. I don't have too much to say. I don't remember too much of it because I didn't take notes while reading. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue with the series because I personally don't have any investment in the story or the characters, but I guess we'll see if this is one of those series where the second book is like so, so much better than the first book, like Throne of Glass or something like that, then I would definitely consider picking up the second book. Please let me know your thoughts on An Ember in the Ashes. Personally, I didn't love it, but if you did love it, I'm happy for you. I'm sorry if I offended anyone by not loving it as much as everyone else does. That definitely wasn't my intention and all I wanted to do was just post my thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and happy reading. Goodbye!